every single one of us, at some point in our lives, faces that sneaky, undermining whisper of self-doubt. It's like a shadow that lingers just out of sight, waiting to cloud our decisions and dampen our spirits. But here's the catch. The real battle isn't against what life throws at us. It's against our own perceptions. The Stoics got this centuries ago, and today we're diving deep into their world. Stoicism, an ancient philosophy crafted during the bustling markets and marble columns of Greece and Rome, teaches us that freedom doesn't come from securing what we want, but from desiring what we have. It's about mastering our responses to anything life decides to toss our way. So if you've ever felt bogged down by negativity or paralyzed by doubt, stick around. Today's journey through the practical wisdom of Stoicism isn't just a history lesson. It's a tool set for life, ready to equip you with the mental armor to turn your darkest doubts into powerful pivots towards personal strength and serenity. Let's uncover how these ancient strategies can forge modern day resilience and transform how we see our world and ourselves. If you appreciate what we're diving into here, the simplest free favor I'll ask from you is to hit the subscribe button. Also, make sure you stick with us throughout the whole video. There's a lot of invaluable insights packed into every minute. Let's go. Number 1. Understanding Negative Thoughts and Self-Doubt Negative thoughts aren't just random clouds that pass through our minds. They're more like patterns or habits of thinking that we've developed over the years. These patterns can really put a damper on everything from our daily mood to our overall mental health. But here's an interesting twist from our Stoic friends. They believed that it's not the events themselves that upset us, but rather the views we hold about them. Think about it this way. When something goes wrong, or not according to plan, our first reaction might be to think, why does this always happen to me? Or, I must have done something wrong. But according to Stoicism, this reaction is under our control. This philosophy teaches us that by changing our perception, we can combat these automatic negative thoughts that tend to bring us down. It's about acknowledging that while we can't always control what happens to us, we certainly can control how we respond to these events. So when you catch yourself spiraling into self-doubt or negativity, remember this key stoic insight. These thoughts are not facts. They are interpretations and reactions that your mind has created. You have the power to challenge and change these interpretations. By practicing this, we start to loosen the grip that negative thoughts have over us, making room for more positive and empowering mindsets. Moreover, embracing stoic wisdom doesn't mean ignoring your feelings or pretending everything is fine when it's not. It's about a more balanced approach recognizing your emotions without letting them control you. It involves stepping back, observing your thoughts as if you were an impartial judge, and then deciding whether those thoughts are rational or helpful. This shift doesn't happen overnight. It takes practice, patience, and a bit of stoic discipline. But the payoff is huge. Imagine being able to face life's ups and downs with a calm and steady mind, one that's capable of turning challenges into opportunities for growth and learning. That's the stoic goal, and it's absolutely achievable. Number two, changing your perspective. This isn't just about seeing the glass as half full instead of half empty. It's about fundamentally altering the lens through which we view our experiences. The stoics were masters at this. They believed that by changing our internal narratives, we can dramatically alter our emotional responses and ultimately our life's trajectory. So how do we start shifting our perspective? Well, it begins by understanding that our initial reactions to situations are often automatic. But here's the empowering part. These reactions are not set in stone. For instance, if you make a mistake at work and immediately think, I'm so incompetent, that's not an unchangeable fact. It's a perspective, 
and a pretty harsh one at that. The Stoics would encourage us to challenge this view, not by sugarcoating the mistake, but by reframing it as a learning opportunity. What can this error teach you? How can it help you grow? This is where Stoicism really shines. It teaches us to embrace obstacles as pathways to improvement. Marcus Aurelius famously said, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. This quote is a powerful reminder that often the things that seem to hinder us can actually be turned to our advantage if we shift our perspective. Changing your perspective also means acknowledging that you are the narrator of your own life. You can choose to tell yourself a story filled with defeat and despair, or you can craft a narrative of resilience and overcoming. This isn't about denying the negative or difficult aspects of life, but about choosing to focus on what you can do, what you can learn, and how you can grow from whatever life throws at you. Another Stoic practice to help shift perspective is the view from above. This involves imagining stepping back and viewing your life from a distance as a whole. From this vantage point, today's overwhelming problems might look smaller and more manageable. This technique helps us to contextualize our experiences, reducing the weight of current troubles and reminding us of the bigger picture. Number three. Focus on what you can control. This is a cornerstone of Stoic philosophy and, honestly, it's a game changer when you start applying it to your life. It's about recognizing the difference between what's in your power and what's not, which can seriously reduce stress and increase your effectiveness. The Stoics laid it out pretty clearly. Some things are up to us and many are not. This might sound simple, but it's profound when put into practice. For example, we can't control the weather, the traffic, or the actions of others. Trying to do so is a recipe for frustration. What we can control are our own thoughts, reactions, and actions. This is where our power lies. Suppose you're up for a promotion at work and you're competing with a coworker. You might stress about how well your co-worker is performing, which can lead to anxiety and self-doubt. Here's the stoic twist. Shift your focus from your co-worker to your own performance. You can control your effort, your attitude, and the quality of your work. By concentrating on these areas, not only do you improve your chances of success, but you also maintain peace of mind because you know you're doing everything within your power. Epictetus put it bluntly, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This is about taking responsibility for your responses. When something doesn't go as planned, instead of getting upset or blaming external factors, ask yourself, what part of this situation can I influence? What can I learn from this? Focusing on what you can control also involves letting go of the need for external validation. Stoicism teaches us to find contentment and self-worth from within. This means not basing your happiness solely on outcomes, which are often influenced by factors outside your control, but rather on the effort and integrity you bring to your pursuits. Focusing on what you can control doesn't mean ignoring the aspects of life that are out of your hands. It means acknowledging them, but not allowing them to dominate your emotions or decisions. It's about internal stability, being the calm in the middle of the storm. Remember that the real power comes from within you, not from the external world. Number four, building resilience through stoic practices. The core of building resilience, according to Stoic philosophy, is the ability to maintain a balanced state of mind, regardless of external circumstances. This means not getting overly excited in good times, nor excessively down in bad times. It's about experiencing life fully, while maintaining an inner equilibrium. One fundamental Stoic practice is the concept of 
Premeditatio Malorum, which translates to the premeditation of evils. It sounds a bit grim, but stay with me, it's incredibly practical. This practice involves visualizing potential negative events or outcomes. Now, why would you want to do that? It's not to become pessimistic, but to prepare yourself mentally for adverse situations. By imagining these scenarios, you reduce the shock and anxiety that might arise if they were to actually occur. You've already walked through the possibility in your mind, and this preparation makes you more robust and ready to handle challenges. Imagine you're about to give a big presentation. A stoic approach would be to consider what could go wrong. Perhaps the technology fails, or you stumble over your words. Think through how you would handle these situations. Maybe you prepare backup materials, or you practice a calming breathing technique in case of nerves. By contemplating these obstacles beforehand, you're not caught off guard, and you're more likely to handle them with grace and composure. Another stoic practice is to focus on what's enduring rather than what's temporary. Stoics emphasize the importance of values like courage, justice, temperance, and wisdom, qualities that do not diminish in the face of hardship, but often grow. Focusing on these enduring values helps you navigate life's ups and downs. When you anchor your identity and actions in such values, External events have less power to destabilize you. For instance, if you value wisdom, you might see a personal setback as an opportunity to learn and grow, which is a far more resilient response than despairing over what went wrong. Each challenge becomes a stepping stone to greater wisdom and character. Additionally, Stoicism teaches the practice of reflection. Regular self-examination helps you to assess your responses and behaviors, ensuring they align with your core values. This reflective practice also increases self-awareness, which is crucial for resilience. Being aware of how you typically react to stress or adversity allows you to start modifying your responses, aligning them more closely with stoic principles. Remember that building resilience is not about eliminating vulnerability. Instead, it's about recognizing your vulnerabilities and facing them with courage and clarity. Stoic practices like premeditation of adversities and focusing on enduring values are not just ancient theories. They are tested tools that can help you navigate the complexities of modern life with strength and grace. Number five. Surrounding yourself with positivity. The people around us can significantly influence our thoughts, emotions and actions. The Stoics often emphasize the importance of associating with people who embody the virtues you value. This could mean spending time with those who are disciplined, optimistic, rational or compassionate, qualities that can positively affect your own character and outlook. Think about it like this. If you're constantly around people who complain, criticize, and see the downside in every situation, it's going to be tougher for you to maintain a positive and proactive outlook. On the other hand, if you're surrounded by individuals who uplift you, challenge you constructively, and focus on the good, you're more likely to adopt these traits yourself. Now, Applying this in your day-to-day -day life starts with a simple yet powerful step. Evaluate your current social circle. Ask yourself, who among your acquaintances uplifts you? Who drains you? Making these distinctions isn't about cutting people out of your life abruptly or judging them harshly. It's about making more informed choices about how much time and energy you devote to these relationships. Epictetus advised, the key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best. So take this to heart by actively seeking out and nurturing relationships with those who inspire you, those who make you want to be your best self. This doesn't just apply to personal relationships, but professional ones as well. Surround yourself with colleagues and mentors who not only excel in their roles, 
but also handle challenges with a positive and resilient spirit. Moreover, surrounding yourself with positivity isn't limited to people. It also includes the content you consume and the environments you frequent. In a world saturated with media, it's crucial to curate what you watch, read and listen to. Choose content that enriches you and aligns with your values rather than what feeds into fears and negativity. Similarly, create a personal environment that reflects the tranquility and orderliness that Stoicism teaches, spaces that are organized, calm and conducive to well-being. Surrounding yourself with positivity is about creating an ecosystem, a blend of people, places and inputs that supports your best self. It's about recognizing that while you cannot control everything outside of you, you can choose where to focus your energy and who to share it with. By doing so, you cultivate a life that not only reflects stoic wisdom, but also enhances your ability to live it out daily. Number six, gratitude and contentment. This is a vibrant thread woven through the fabric of Stoic philosophy, underscoring the idea that true happiness isn't found in having more, but in appreciating what we already have. This principle isn't just about feeling good. It's about creating a foundation of mental strength and emotional resilience. The Stoics suggest that by cultivating a sense of gratitude and contentment, we can shield ourselves against the dissatisfaction that often arises from constant desire for more. They teach us to focus on our blessings rather than our deprivations, shifting our attention from lack to abundance. This shift is powerful. When we count our blessings, our perspective changes, and so does our experience of life. Let's break it down with a practical exercise that you can do anytime, anywhere. Start by taking a moment each day to think of three things you're grateful for. These don't have to be big things. They can be as simple as a good cup of coffee, a call with a friend, or just the fact that you had a peaceful morning. What this does is, it programs your mind to look for and recognize the good in your life countering the brain's natural tendency to focus on problems or threats. This practice ties into contentment. The Stoics believe that contentment comes from accepting what you have and where you are in life, rather than always reaching for the next thing that you think will make you happy. Seneca put it beautifully when he said, It is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more that is poor. This means that poverty isn't just a lack of material goods, but a lack of gratitude for what one has. Contentment also means embracing the present moment. Instead of ruminating over the past or worrying about the future, Stoicism teaches us to live fully in the now. This is where life happens, right here, right now. By anchoring yourself in the present, you can appreciate your life as it is not as you think it should be. This acceptance reduces anxiety and fosters a deep, abiding peace. Moreover, gratitude and contentment are not just passive feelings, they're active choices. They involve recognizing that while we might not control external events, we can control our responses to them. This includes choosing to be grateful and choosing contentment over dissatisfaction. When you practice these choices daily, they become habits that fortify your inner life. Fostering gratitude and contentment allows you to find joy in your journey, regardless of your circumstances. It turns every day into an opportunity to celebrate, rather than a series of obstacles to overcome. Number 7. Acceptance and Letting Go Stoicism teaches that much of our suffering stems from trying to control what is inherently out of our control. The weather, the past, other people's actions, these are all beyond our direct influence. The Stoics advise us to instead focus on our own actions and reactions, which are within our control. This is the essence of the famous Serenity Prayer, 
which echoes Stoic philosophy. Seeking the serenity to accept what cannot be changed, the courage to change what can be, and the wisdom to know the difference. Acceptance does not mean resignation or passivity. Rather, it's about recognizing reality as it is, without overlaying it with our fears, desires or prejudices. For example, if you're passed over for a promotion, it's natural to feel disappointed or even angry. But Stoicism encourages us to accept the event without letting it define us or dictate our emotional state. Instead, we can let go of resentment and focus on what we can do next, perhaps improving our skills, seeking feedback, or exploring new opportunities. Letting go is equally important. It involves releasing the desire for things to be different when such a desire serves no purpose other than to make us miserable. It means not clinging to past hurts, grudges, or even former glories, as all these keep us tethered to what cannot be altered. Marcus Aurelius once said, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This powerful statement reminds us that our true power lies in our ability to let go of the uncontrollable and focus our energy on our thoughts and actions, which are ours to command. Practically, acceptance and letting go can be cultivated through mindfulness practices like meditation, where we learn to observe our thoughts and feelings without attachment. It's about noticing when we're ruminating on the past or worrying about the future and gently guiding our attention back to the present. This practice not only enhances our ability to let go, but also deepens our acceptance of whatever the present moment brings. In your everyday life, start small. Notice when you're resisting something that cannot be changed and gently remind yourself to accept and let go. Whether it's traffic, a canceled flight, or a rainy day that ruined your picnic plans, practice saying to yourself, this is how it is, and it's okay. Over time, these small acts of acceptance and letting go build up, creating a profound inner peace and resilience that can handle much larger challenges with grace. Number 8. Self-Reflection and Growth Stoicism places a huge emphasis on the practice of self-reflection. This is the art of looking inward, examining our thoughts, emotions and behaviours. The idea isn't to judge ourselves harshly, but to observe and understand. It's about asking, why did I react that way? Or, what can this teach me? This level of introspection helps us align our actions with our values and principles, which is the cornerstone of Stoic philosophy. One powerful aspect of Stoic self-reflection is the focus on areas for improvement without dwelling on the negative. It's not about beating yourself up for mistakes or shortcomings, but about recognizing them as opportunities for personal growth. For example, if you find yourself frequently upset by minor inconveniences, self-reflection could reveal a lack of patience or perhaps an unrealistic expectation of how events should unfold. Recognizing this is the first step in choosing to respond differently in the future. Seneca often wrote letters to his friends filled with reflections on his own experiences and lessons learned. He saw these reflections as crucial to personal growth, emphasizing that wisdom comes not from random experiences but from reflecting on these experiences. He advocated for daily self-reflection as a way to deepen understanding and wisdom. In practical terms, you can incorporate self-reflection into your daily routine by setting aside time each day, maybe just a few minutes, to think about your actions, decisions and interactions. Keeping a journal can be particularly helpful. Writing not only allows you to record your reflections, but also to process your thoughts more deeply. Ask yourself, what went well today? What didn't? How did I handle stress? Was I kind and patient with others? What could I do better tomorrow? Moreover, Stoicism teaches that true growth 
also involves occasionally stepping out of your comfort zone. This might mean facing a fear, trying something new, or even changing a long-held belief if you find it no longer serves you. The Stoics believed that discomfort often signals the beginning of a growth opportunity. By willingly facing these challenges, you can develop resilience, confidence, and greater self-awareness. Stoic self-reflection includes recognizing and celebrating your growth. It's important to acknowledge the progress you've made, which can be incredibly motivating. Reflect on where you were a year ago versus where you are today. Celebrate the small victories along the way. This not only reinforces positive changes, but also boosts your morale and enthusiasm for continued self-improvement. As we close this chapter on our stoic journey, remember, the power to conquer your doubts and transform your thoughts lies within you. Harness the wisdom of the stoics and let it light your path to a more resilient and fulfilling life. Thank you for joining me here at the Stoic Journal. Don't forget to check out the suggested videos on your screen for more insights and guidance. Together, let's continue to grow and embrace the strength that comes from within.